Hey guys, this is Amber from the Happy Caravan. I'm a mom of 10 kids and we live in New York City and I'm gonna show you what we eat in a week. This is Monday and so this is dinner edition. Sorry, it's messy, um, but it's life around here. So what we're making right now is some lentil soup. So for starters, it has onions and carrots and celery. So we saute that, they're cut really small. Then we put in kind of the bigger pieces of carrots, and of course lentils, we rinse those. And it's about a cup and a half of lentils. And then um, eventually after this comes to a boil, we'll put these potatoes in there, bring it to a boil again, simmer it for about 20 minutes, put in some salt and thyme, and it's yummy. Okay, so I forgot to show you guys the chicken broth. I'm trying to see if I, here it is, chicken stock. So this is the chicken stock that we use from Costco. And um, it's, it's pretty economical and seems like it's, <laughs> seems like it's got good stuff in there. So makes a good soup. Okay, so the soup has simmered for about uh, 20 minutes after it came to the boil. And I just kind of test to make sure that the potatoes are soft, that the carrots are you know, soft enough. They're pretty soft. They could be a little softer, but we're actually gonna go shopping right now. So then I have some salt and some thyme. I'm not sure how much salt. Honestly, salt is kind of a to taste thing. And then just a dried thyme. I kind of scrunch it up, put it in there and it tastes really good. And so we're actually gonna go grocery shopping right now, but dinner's ready when we come back. And I like to serve it with, this is what I got while I was at the store earlier today. Yeah. I like to serve it with some, just some sourdough bread. I would have done some baguette, but the, the guy from Senegal, he's like, he has this cool like Senegalese like, accent. He's like, you know, I was sick. I could not make the bread. So I guess there's just one baker at the market for our house and he's not there. It doesn't happen. So I bought this stuff instead. Sa San Francisco sourdough. We're all missing our San Francisco sourdough. So that's what we're having with it. Hi guys, welcome to Tuesday evening. This is what we're having for dinner Tuesday evening. And Mark, I have been taking over the cooking, but Mark's helping me with this one because it's Tuesday and well, he's available. <laughs> so, oh wow, that's is that like a secret thing you do? Yeah, just add a little flavor. Oh, he's showing off his secrets. I didn't know that. I was like, why is Mark's pizza so good? That's good because if he's not here, I need to know. So, oh, you don't put the cheese on the bottom? Uh, no. I I've done it in the past, but okay, so we need more on top. So. More on top, more cheese on top. Okay, so Mark's showing us how he does it. So anyway, so we were having um, pizza tonight, and we just use these um, pre-made crusts from Trader Joe's. I have made pizza crusts in the past, back when I was a bread maker, but when we moved, we had to just kind of like bare bones things, and we, um, we didn't have room for a bread maker. So we just... <laughs> now one of the reasons to put the veggies underneath is that they get softer. Okay, they so the veggies... Faster, oh because yeah, because they might the not be... They might yeah. not be, yeah, okay. If they're on top, they tend to stay relatively crunchy. Yeah, that's interesting, okay. Yeah, so maybe like... Probably if you have like a pizza oven, like it's different, like it's probably a different thing, yeah, but... I think the heat is... Just you know, maybe it's if so we, hot, yeah. If we cooked it on uh, like the barbecue on convection or something, or something yeah. it would probably go very quick, but yeah. seven doesn't cook evenly. As you well know. So pizza is one of those meals where all the kids eat it. Even like some of the kids don't like mushrooms, some of the kids don't like, I don't know, bell peppers, whatever, they, they eat it anyway. So <laughs> I guess pizza is like the perfect carrier. And then, so yeah, so he's got the... You just put mushrooms, bell peppers, and then we get this pepperoni from Trader Joe's. And we also use um, pre-grated or I guess shredded mozzarella, which also makes it a little easier. So yeah, this is very economical from Trader Joe's. It feels like cheating, but it's not. I still feel like this is like I just feel healthier after this pizza than if I just eat like you know like pre-made pizza from like the freezer section. It feels like more, feels like more legit. <laughs> so here is the beautiful pizza. Use these pizza stones. Helps it be more crusty. And it looks nice and bubbly and sizzly. 
<laughs> Marco Pizza delivers. Okay, so this is Chloe's beautiful pizza. And then we also have a beautiful salad. So it can be healthy pizza. Hey, Chloe, this is one box. <laughs> so here's my beautiful pizza plate and with the salad. Looks better with salad. And I put just basically a little bit of olive oil, some balsamic vinegar on the salad, and then parmesan cheese, and then it makes it extra yummy. Okay, so I'm testing Mark's handiwork. Let's see. Very good. Pizza's better in New York, even at home. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to Wednesday. <laughs> Sorry. Tonight we're gonna make some Romanian chicken soup. And it's kind of a good way to get vegetables and chicken and Melody wants to be in the video. Vegetables and chicken and all that good stuff. Oh, Moses wants to be in the video too. There's Moses. Ah. Vegetables. Oh, you're gonna show him your tea. <laughs> vegetables and chicken and yeah, all sort of stuff. And then we have bread with it yeah. just to round it out. So I'm gonna get cooking. <laughs> what do you think, Mo? You having a jam bread snack? Yes. I. Okay, so I'm going to show you the vegetables of the vegetable soup. So we're doing some onions. I think I'll do two onions. It's not exact science. Carrots, celery, and it's supposed to be there's a green pepper in here. It's supposed to be red pepper, but alas, the red peppers are gone. So they <laughs> were out of red peppers too. Just so we got one sad little. Beautiful green pepper. So I'm just gonna chop this stuff up, and that's gonna form the base of the soup. You you telling me about it, Mom? So we chopped up our vegetables. I'm gonna put some olive oil in there. It's been a while since I've made this because Mark's usually cooking, but it's my turn. So olive oil, and here are my vegetables. Sorry, that's too messy. Moses has a lemon. <laughs> Okay, Moses, hold on. Um, we can put that in in the end, okay? So I'm gonna put in these um, vegetables. This is just my, my onions, <laughs> my bell peppers. Kind of let that saute, I guess. And then Melody's gonna bring me these Wait, goodies. Yes. Are these? So this have? is celery and carrots. So yeah, just let that saute for a while. Okay, so here is the secret sauce. Oh, just kidding, it's actually the secret chicken. So this is the chicken, and this is why you can make this meal without chicken stock, because it basically is like creating its own chicken stock. So it's basically just chicken thighs. It took all the fat off. Still has the bone though. The bone's very important, because that's where a lot of the flavor and probably the nutrients is. So I'm just gonna put it in here and Turn around, let it saute a bit, and then corrode water, and that's kind of the base for the soup. So let's cook. <laughs> okay. So doesn't look like much now. I don't know, but <laughs> it's just stirred in there. Incorporated the vegetables. We're gonna put water over the top and bring it to a boil, then let it simmer. And the recipe actually says you can take out the chicken and all the, the vegetables and so forth, and then like put some more vegetables in or just use the broth or whatever. So if you don't like little vegetables in your soup, then you can take them out, but I like little vegetables in my soup. So I'm gonna put some water over there. Okay guys, so this is old old world style chicken in every pot soup. <laughs> so I need to, I forget what, what president, it was the president in the Great Depression and he was like, you know, was telling everyone he was gonna, I think it was his like, election bid and he's like I'm gonna make a chicken and you know everyone's gonna have a chicken a chicken in every pot or whatever so because obviously you know with the Great Depression there was not a chicken in every pot but this is probably what he had in mind so yeah so actually the <laughs> I'm not following the recipe the recipe actually says to take a whole chicken and cut it up and you know then it's, it's in there so it really would be a chicken in the pot but 
It's just chicken thighs in the pot. That way there's no like fighting amongst kids. Like I want this piece, I want that piece. It's just like they're all the same kids. So just gonna simmer it until it's basically chicken's pretty much cooked all the way through. And then we have a few more steps and we've got soup. So last but not least, well not last, there's a few more steps, but right now I'm gonna put the carrot pieces in there. So we can take the lid off while it's bubbing in. So we're gonna get our bigger carrot chunks. You don't want to put them in right at the very beginning because then they get too mushy and it's not very good. So continue to simmer. Okay, next secret ingredient is tomato sauce. That in there. flavor and color to then we're gonna put some um, noodles in there no yolks I don't know I think you can use regular egg noodles just little little noodles so I'll put them in there so put in these noodles let those cook kind of comes back to the boil um, Another ingredient, obviously salt, because this is not, oh. Okay, so next is we're gonna put one teaspoon of salt and five teaspoons of Vegeta. This is, I like to use nature Vegeta because it doesn't have any MSG. Um, it just has like vegetables and stuff in it, but it has like, it has like dehydrated vegetables, carrot, parsnip, onion, potato, celery root, tomato, leek, paprika, parsley leaves, sugar, lavage, I don't know what that is, black pepper, turmeric, garlic, and dill. So, no like MSG or anything. Okay, so now we stir it around, it's starting to look more like soup, <laughs> making a mess of course. Um, so yeah, I stir it around and um, by the time the noodles and everything is ready, you know, chicken should also be ready. It's been cooking for a while. And the last step is to put um, some fresh parsley. Um, I just put a bunch of parsley. And then also um, the Romanian chicken soup, they always put lemon in there and they liked it extra sour. So they would actually put um, lemons at the table, like sliced lemon at the table. And oftentimes they'd also serve it with sour cream. Super good with like a rustic bread or like a French baguette or something. It's just kind of a simple like country sort of soup <laughs> soup for peasants <laughs> you know peasants live longer than the than the kings so eat like a peasant for your health <laughs> so Mark, Mark is a sweetie one and helping me chop the parsley he's actually he's been the cook recently and so now I've been taking over and he's much better at it than I am <laughs> So, a lot, no, sorry, Enoch is over there practicing violin. That's the beautiful music you hear in the background. And then here's the soup. Not all the kids like lemon, so it tastes really good. There's, basically everyone gets like a whole piece of chicken in the soup. And then um, people that like lemon can squirt a little bit of lemon in there. And it gives it a little bit of our kick. Um, also, you can put a little bit of sour cream if you're interested. There's our little dollop of sour cream. And just kind of gives it a little more creamy body if you're interested. Okay, Josiah, what do you think about the soup? Melvin. you. Oh, you spoke French. I see. Very nice. Hi guys, welcome to Thursday. I don't know why I can never remember what day of the week it is. But tonight we are making Tuesday chicken. The reason we call it Tuesday chicken is because it's something my granny used to make on Tuesday. She um, had a bunch of servicemen. So this is like military people staying at her house. Um, back in like the 70s, 
kind of, yeah, basically 70s. I think maybe early 80s, too. She had service and stayed at her house, and she kind of had the set meal plan she made every week. And then one of the things she made was Tuesday chicken. Um, she always tried to have some sort of meat or something, like, not so much casserole, but, like, actual meat, because a lot of the military guys were just so happy to have, like, a real meal that they were just, like, I think on the, on the ship, which is a lot of them were Navy, a lot of them, um, you know, had a lot of casseroles and so forth on the ship, and so having, like, you know, a real piece of chicken was like, wow, you know, so I think she tried to cater to that, but it's pretty simple. I think, um, so my husband has been cooking, but now I'm cooking more because he's trying to get a job and working towards that, and so I'm doing all the other stuff, and so, um, my husband kind of altered the recipe a little bit from what my granny used to make, but not too much. It's pretty, it's pretty simple. It's pretty easy. So over here, we have our chicken pieces. We have about um, 12 chicken pieces for our family of 12. Obviously, the little babies don't have their own piece necessarily, but the big teenagers, they finish off what the babies don't eat. <laughs> And then I'm actually using, I, I put it on the community tab a while ago because people asked about it. So I'm actually using my community tab um, recipe <laughs> so I know how to make it. But it basically has flour and oil and some salt and all that stuff. So I think what I'll do is I'll just put it on time lapse so I'm, I don't bore you. Um, <laughs> if you're interested in the true recipe, you can go to the community tab on our channel and um, I posted it. So. Okay, so this is what it looks like. I promise you, it, it's gonna taste, it's gonna taste good. And it's kind of green from the poultry seasoning, there's a lot of sage and so forth in there, so I'm going to apply it to the chicken. So, here it is in all of its um, pre-cooked glory. And um, it's not super complicated, it's, pretty easy which is nice and I'm just gonna put it in the oven bake for 375 at 45 minutes just want to check the internal temperature just to make sure it's all good and healthy <laughs> So with this meal, I'm going to make white rice and peas. And usually, <laughs> can't believe I forgot this. Okay, usually we have salad with homemade buttermilk ranch dressing with this meal. And the kids are gonna be so mad at me that I forgot that part. So well, of course we can have salad with regular dressing, but what, what my granny always served was homemade buttermilk dressing. <laughs> Alas, I have failed this time, but next time I'll try and remember. <laughs> okay, so because I forgot to get buttermilk. I'm gonna make a different um, salad dressing. I'm just gonna be, it's pretty simple. Um, just use kind of a neutral oil using canola. It's a smaller press, I know it's not the best, but it's very neutral. And uh, I also sometimes use um, avocado oil, just something that's very like, not super, like you can't taste it. And then apple cider vinegar. I think I actually used too much oil. <laughs> Don't use as much oil as I use. Um, okay. And then I do like apple cider vinegar. It's a great way to use some apple cider vinegar because it's really good for you and it's hard to find ways to get it in your diet. At least I've heard it's good for you. Um, and this is, <laughs> this is what makes it all good and tasty, about a teaspoon of salt, and then three teaspoons, one, two, three of sugar. I don't know why, but sugar and salad dressing just makes it taste good. Um, and I think I should get some black pepper. Hold on, right back. Yeah. 
black pepper. It gives it just that little spunky spunkiness. <laughs> Sorry, my camera angle's so bad. I use a GoPro to film, so. <laughs> I think it's made for like high speed, like bicycle, you know, races and stuff and not for cooking, <laughs> so. <laughs> Eventually, I may up my camera game, but for now, this is what we're doing. Okay, so it's just, um, like I said, I put too much oil. I usually don't use this much oil, but a lot, of whatever, this is the thing. I just put it on the salad itself, and whatever does not, you know, stick to the lettuce, which basically goes to the bottom of the bowl. I'm not a huge fan of store-bought salad dressing. I just feel like... I always feel kind of yucky after it. I don't know why. Why is something wrong with me? <laughs> I'm just help dressing. Okay, so. Here's my salad. Just put it over the top and just kind of toss it on there and um, has that good yummy this that makes salad kids want to eat salad, usually. <laughs> so the chicken is out and it looks like this. <laughs> And the reason why it has this almost fried chicken look is because it has all that flour in there and that helps it kind of have, you know, kind of like a fried chicken feel to it without all that work of fried chicken. So here is the final plate. We have our butter on our rice and the peas and then the salad and then um, usually a salad dressing would be my homemade ranch, but this time it's kind of a canola oil dressing and um, Yes, yeah, so this is a meal in general the kids really like, and now they're they're upstairs playing, and I have to bring them down so they can eat. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to Friday night. Tonight we are having tacos, <laughs> and Melody's helping me over there. Okay, so we are gonna have just ground beef taco meat. I'm using this taco seasoning from Trader Joe's, and it requires some tomato. It has tomatoes in it, and also an onion. So I'm going to brown the beef and put the stuff in there and it turns into taco meat. And then we're also going to have some refried beans. So here's our refried beans. Well, they're not. What I did was I just cooked regular pinto beans for about 42 minutes on high pressure in the Instant Pot. And then I'm going to put some salt and ginger in there. I have a couple of frozen ginger cubes. Then I'm going to... Um, puree it i have this like puree mixture thing and then i put in cheese and salsa so it's kind of like refried beans you get in a restaurant but like cheating <laughs> okay so put the oil in i'm using avocado oil because you can have it be pretty hot and as far as oils go i feel like it's a little healthier than some of the other ones. I also use Expeller Pressed Canola, but I've heard that one's not so good for you either. And then Melly's over here playing with my onions. Are you playing with my onions? Yes. Yes, okay. Well, you're gonna get onion hands. You know that? Yeah. They're gonna sound like onions. Okay, let go, let go. Uh, let go. Yeah. yeah, 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 okay. So, we're gonna yeah. cook the onions. I think my, I forget who calls these. My, my dad calls these gringo tacos. Which basically, because if you know how um, real people from Mexico make tacos, it's usually with shredded, shredded beef, but alas, uh, general ground beef is cheaper. <laughs> so now we've got our onions are kind of browned. No, so we're just. <laughs> you don't know. Not over there. No, they're not. Judging from, from not how she's brown. having. Well, they're not brown, they're white. I know. I think they just, I think you just call it brown. I don't know. This season. <laughs> they're, they're a little bit translucent. Oh, okay. So then we're just going to brown with brown beef. This is like about a little over a pound. I think this is, uh, let's see. This is 1.34 pounds. So basically for our entire family, two and two thirds pounds of meat keeps everyone full-ish. But of course we're also rounding it out with beans, which really helps. Okay, now he's, now he's over there accompanying me on the piano to children. Okay, so I'm putting in the taco seasoning. I guess I was actually supposed to put it in with the beef, so if you're following this recipe. 
<laughs> Do better than me. Okay, so then I'm just gonna stir in the taco seasoning. Let's make sure it gets all browned and good. And then I'm gonna add in the canned tomatoes. Okay guys, so <laughs> I cooked the beef for too long. I don't really know what I'm doing. Mark usually is the cook. We're putting in the tomatoes. Um, it's not bad. It's actually pretty good, but don't be like me. Read the directions on the back of the, <laughs> the back of the package. But so it's like browned, but like I don't know. I think ground beef is supposed to have a little bit of pink. So anyway, follow the directions. <laughs> it says Amber. So here's the tomatoes. They're supposed to be diced tomatoes, but they do not have diced tomatoes. So we are having some whole super sweet San Marz Marzanino tomatoes. So those sound fancy. You know, my kids are pretty easy going. I think they'll like it. So, I have an announcement to make. Even though I totally messed everything up, <laughs> it actually tastes pretty good. So, this is definitely fail proof. It's the, just show me knock. It's the Trader Joe's seasoning taco mix. And it's foolproof, because even I couldn't mess it up. <laughs> okay guys, here are my frijoles. Um, I put a little bit of salt and ginger in them, and then I emptied out most of the water, not all of it, and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do next. Okay, so this is where the refried yummy taste comes in. <laughs> um, so we put the cheese in there, okay, and we let it kind of melt and become one with the beans. It's amazing how much the beans just kind of eat up all that cheese. <laughs> Okay, so I messed up. I only have green salsa. I don't know if this is gonna work. I'm supposed to put red salsa, but we're gonna put some green salsa. And this is where a lot of flavor comes from. So here's where the magic happens. Use this like emerging blender. So, refried beans, voila. Okay, so here is our Delamotte taco plate extraordinaire. Obviously the number of tacos is relative to whoever is eating it. And then we have our little refried beans over there, taco, the meat's on the bottom, and then we got some lettuce, tomato, cheese, if you wanna put salsa or chula or whatever on there, you can. But it's a fun, um, Fun way to enjoy that south of the border feeling when you are north of the border. <laughs> no, I'm gonna make. I'm gonna um make. <laughs> are you having some cheese tacos, Melody? Yeah. I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> well, I'm actually gonna put some tomatoes. Okay. Do you want some meat too? Um. You should have. So use it's use a spoon, food. okay? Use a spoon. No, I don't want it. Daddy, I tasted the meat and it was so yummy. Uh, Hi, I'm Melody, and I have a taco. Hey guys, welcome to Saturday. For dinner today, we are having good stuff. This <laughs> is just going to demonstrate. He's been doing crazy stuff. We're having sweet potatoes, and chicken, and quinoa, and watermelon. You excited, Mo? <laughs> Here's our summer lunch loveliness. Okay, so we I think this is our 100k plaque. So we're gonna celebrate it and open it. So Elijah decided we should get some confetti. Yep. Okay, so do you want to pop no, it no, no, first no, no, or should no, we no, open no, it? No, 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 no,
Yeah, we're gonna make well, like smash sprinkles. Them. Why would we smash them? To make them, oh, I think, to, for the yeah, for yeah, the ice cream. All right. Like a cold stone topic. What? Yeah, like cold stones. Okay, so here's our finished ice cream sundaes for our celebration. You excited to have some ice cream? Both clapping. Yay. Yay. Are you happy too? <laughs> Everyone is happy. Wait, why did you make yours different? Why did you make yours different? Oh. Yes. Good question. Uh, I'm just as much as everybody yeah, else. It's just more okay. Hold on, Elijah. Don't eat yours. I have to show your bowl. <laughs> it's not, it's not, Elijah's not is a not little bit, uh, got a little extra cream on his. Are we ready for Okay. You like that, Mo? Is that the good stuff? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing how quiet everyone is when they're eating ice cream, huh, Mo? <laughs> he even knows us. He even knows us. Mo, is that to see? Oh, yeah, that's your pick. That's my pick. <laughs> 